It is now, at least with the pleasure of seeing you. Garçon, where's that coffee? I should like to put a teaspoon of poison into each of their cups. A few prisoners sent for harvest are being returned to Germany on tonight's train to their deaths. One of them is my daughter's fiancé. Will you help? Yes, but we shall need your help. We're short of men because of our other operations. I'll find someone. Where's Sadovsky? Inside. You did well, madame. So did you. Edward, since they killed his father, he doesn't say a word. Nothing. He stares into space, hardly moving. Edward? Ah, oh. oh.
How can I thank you, madame? You mean the world to my daughter. That's all I needed to know. How is she? I haven't heard from her for several months. It has become very difficult in Paris. Must be the Ondine crossing in one hour. You told them midnight? Yes. It's here. No, madame, I'll take them myself. You've done enough for tonight. Thank you, madame. Godspeed, Armand. Where have you been? Damn it! You have no idea what's at stake. You have a duty to safeguard Valmont. Listen to me! You cannot jeopardize what belongs to me. Valmont does not belong to you, and never will. Then we lose everything. Get some hot water and bandages. Your stepmother at home. Why, what's the matter? A resistance operation took place last night. Some of the workers escaped. A woman was spotted among the group. We have brave women in Chopin, Captain. She is a foolish woman if she is caught. Where were you last night? Here. Of course. It has been suggested by our sources that you should be watched very carefully. Has Madame de Lancel been here all night? All night, Captain, you have my word.
Annie has so much energy. I think I'll sign her up for the ATA. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll make a great couple. For my dead body. As soon as this war's over, I'm going to make of you a proper English gentlewoman. I can't imagine Freddie doing needlepoint. <laughs> it's the price one pays for marrying an aristocrat. Yeah. I think I'm ready to grow a few little elves of my own. Though I'll be far more selective in my choice of a husband than Freddie's been. <clears throat> Won't be long now before the invasion. The seaports are so clogged with men and materials. We'll be able to sink the whole island ourselves without Hitler's help. <laughs> I guess I'll never ferry a bomber. Baby or no baby. Talking of bombers. You'll be scrapping everything after this bloody war is over. I'll be able to pick up a few DC-3s for my air cargo business in California. You can fly one in any time you want, Freddy. Oh, that sounds great. You're bloody serious, aren't you? After the war, I'm going to burn your uniform, cut up your forage cap and wings, make you grow your hair down to your knees, and then get you pregnant again. It's my duty to vegetate? Is that it? Baby or no baby, I'm a pilot. I was a pilot first. I'm going to be a pilot again. Do you say the stupidest things, Tony? Ready? Ready? Why is everyone against me? For God's sake, Freddy's being a pain. Hasn't been the same between us since Annie. You don't understand what the war has done. I'll tell you what it's done. It's turned Freddy into something I don't like. Well, then blame Hitler, not Freddy. Freddy, Jane, and a lot of other women have had to do things they never thought possible. Like flying spits, bombers, living through the Blitz. If I'm lucky enough to survive this war, I don't want to have to battle to survive my own marriage. Freddy loves flying, Tony. You can't cheat her out of her future. You Yanks just don't seem to understand. There's only one commander per squadron. Jubilation sweeps France as French troops head the advance that will bring freedom once more to the majestic city of Paris. General de Gaulle, that great symbol of France, sends his trusted generals, Leclerc and Punic, to head the strike. Frenchmen everywhere are jubilant as they see the tanks of the three French forces together with the Isn't men... your sister in Paris? Smash the yes. red under the crush. To the future. Mm. The future. Of course. Circumstances have changed for both of us now that the surrender of Paris has been negotiated. Yes, you'd better get out with your treasures quickly. The resistance are handily dealing with your troops all over the city. Ah. Your countrymen have become rabid indeed. Well, you've taught us well. I doubt we have taught you anything, Delancey. <laughs> At any rate, we've both made a great deal of money, and uh, Switzerland is close enough for you to get to. I, at least, have the good fortune to remain in France. Ah, the Lancel. You are a true survivor. Thank you.
it's all right. It's our mom. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I felt such loneliness. Oh my God. I know. The flags. Father? After your father died, the heart went out of her. God rest her soul. Freddy? Delphine? Both safe and well. <laughs> no. Marry? Yes, our little Delphine is going to marry. She's very happy and very much in love. Thank you, Jeanette. Oh, by the way. This is the Honorable Mrs. Anthony Longbridge and Annie, your granddaughter. Like Freddy. Oh, we're blessed with miracles. I notice that the smaller vineyards have lost acres of vines from neglect, and you know, without some help from the bank, we'll probably fail. Never mind, the treasure will save Valmont. Let's get rid of that. Did I frighten you, Bruno? No. No, I was just uh, surprised. I arrived this morning. We must have a glass of champagne. Yes, of course. Why not a pink champagne, Bruno? A pink champagne from a good vintage. The kind your grandfather took such pride in. The best, Lancel. You sound strange, Father. Not yourself, not at all. You see this? My father gave me this when I left for war in 1914. I used it this morning to open the treasure. I don't have to tell you what I found. No, don't give yourself the trouble. 
A half million bottles gone. I used them as any intelligent man. While you were having your soft war in London, tagging after your courageous general, never seeing a German, I did what I had to. And for whom did you have to do this? The family. I had no option. The Germans insisted they knew all about it. You're lying. No one knew. Well, that's as it may be. Leave here. Leave Champagne. Gladly. And leave France. Never. This is my country. You have no country from this time onwards. Unless you do leave France, I will expose you. You dishonor your country and your name. It's your name too, don't forget. You would do anything to protect it. You are wrong. I will do anything to get rid of you! You would do that too, wouldn't you? I took the bullets out. Oh, I thought of using it on you earlier. But I want you to live, knowing that as long as you live, you can never again return to France. So go! 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 Overboard, Freddy. It's a holiday, that's all. This heat has probably taken its toll on Port Jock, too. <laughs> I don't want to hear another excuse. I came here to get paid. Hey, now, wait a second. No. Look, I'm not listening to me. It. Oh, there he is, in trouble I'm again. I'm here to discuss it. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's go see Uncle Jock. Hey, wait, hold on, hold on. Hey, now give me one more week, okay? You got one week, but you got no plan. Yeah. Annie, Annie, look at you. Oh, what a big girl you are. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming, Tony. Oh. <laughs> well, you know the rules. Just to look around and then back home, yeah. Oh, look, I don't know how you dragged him out of the muck, but whatever you did, it was worth it, Parker. <laughs> you heard the commander. Just one look. Oh, come on, we know different, don't we? Huh? So, uh, what do you think of the flying green grocer? Well, I know you're in on the ground floor of a whole new industry, but how do you expect to make it if you're not flying? I finished the run an hour ago, San Jose and back, a half a ton of tomatoes and a ton of onions. When's your next run? Day after. I'm waiting on lemons for Frisco, flowers for Illinois. But Tony, I need more planes. I need some help from people I can trust. I need to lease at least three more planes. Just imagine this. Three DC-3s loaded to the gills, delivering produce and everything else that's worth getting in a hurry to New York, Boston, Chicago. You Yanks do too much imagining. Well, why don't you try it, huh? Come in with me. We'll be partners. We'll all be together again. We're just visiting, Jock. Okay, then just visit. For a year. Oh, oh, Tony. <laughs> oh terrific! Terrific! <laughs> Post-war opportunities are creating one of the biggest booms this country has ever seen, V. Combed. Sound investment has the bouquet of a fine wine. Wouldn't you say? Yes, Mr. Tash. My wife and I often enjoy your Chateau Valmont. It's a shame more Americans don't appreciate champagne. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're a beer and pretzel country, Vicomte. 
Well, I did not come in from London to discuss champagne, Mr. Tash. Have you received my letter? Oh, yes, of course, Vicomte. How much did you want to invest? $20 million. Naturally, if more is needed, then that's available. $20 million in California is a hell of a commitment. Just be sure that you keep it away from those half-baked movie makers. <laughs> and with your uh, investment success in London, I'm sure that we can get as many investors as you want to go in with you. I'm not interested, and uh, my participation should be kept quiet. Do you understand? Well, yes, of course, as you wish. And my wife and I traveled in Europe extensively before the war. You must hate being away from France. The discussion is over, Mr. Tash. Your attempted at familiarity bores me. lady of the DC-3s this morning. Salinas Valley Produce Association for two days. We can make a daily run full both ways if she gets the contract. Supervise Annie this. Supervise Annie that. Read her to sleep tonight, gone flying. She'd never have done this back home, not in a million years. She said she tried to wake you, but you were out cold. Freddie hasn't touched down in a week. I got lonesome and had a few. You'd have done the same, old boy. <laughs> Tony. We have got five planes with two more coming. She's doing a hell of a job. You're a lucky man, or maybe you don't know it. I'll put a sock in it, Jock. She hasn't been the same since she set foot in California. As if she owns the whole bloody world. Oh. Hello, Brenda. Honey. Um, come upstairs a minute. I want to show you something. Did you see the prospectus on the two new planes? Oh, of course I did. I thought you did a marvelous job. Thank you. Right in here. Winged eagles can handle as much as you can grow. Wholesalers all over the country are clamoring for California fruits, vegetables, and flowers. If your produce is as good as you brag about, they'll pay premium dollars. And air shipping will look mighty cheap. Haybrook Farms took a bath on those ripe tomatoes to New York. It uh, seems one of your DC-3s felt like staying in Kansas for two days. <laughs> <laughs> We do break down sometimes. But did Haybrook tell you how much money they're making when we don't break down? Well, no, they don't reveal that. <laughs> we had surplus melons and lettuce, but no buyer. Yeah. You come up with one, I'll try you. You bring me a ton tomorrow at 2, and I'll get you a buyer. Or I'll eat them myself. <laughs> <laughs> You see this for Annie? All right? Mm -hmm. Be my angel. to get a bigger place. I'm sick of rented furniture. I want my own home. I just haven't had any time to look with the business growing like it has. Would you look at our children? They are so different. So are our husbands. 
Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not going to allow Lauren to date till she's 20. You remember what I was like when I was young? Oh, I was a living horror. <laughs> I'm going to watch her like a hawk. Where's Tony? And he's not going to wait till midnight to blow out these candles. No, he's working late. Jack promised me he'd collect him and get him here on time. You still flying in bad weather? Yeah. Well, how does it feel to be a successful businesswoman? <laughs> I'm trying to be a good wife, too, but it's hard. Do you know things were going to be wonderful between you and Omar from the very beginning? I was mad about him from the second I laid eyes on him. I nearly blew it after the war, feeling guilty about Bruno and the rape. I followed your advice and I told him everything. He wanted to kill Bruno. Why did you stop him? I don't know. <laughs> uh. Life's different for me. I love Annie and Tony so much. When I can't get home to be with them every single night, I feel like I'm doing everything wrong. <laughs> Voila! daughter is waiting to blow out her birthday candles. <laughs> well, I'm celebrating here tonight where I can count on the company. Get on your feet. Come on, get on your feet. Come on. Hey, where are you going? Fool. Look at you. You're married to an incredible woman and you are blowing it. <laughs> Tell me about it. What are you in front of me. It kills me to see you throwing it away. You've always been obsessed with Freddy. You're in love with her, aren't you? I'm, I'm sorry about tonight. Uh, you better go on without Tony. He uh, got caught up in something. We already have. Well, this is Longbridge. Well, Mr. Armstrong, I've been waiting for an answer for two weeks. Yes, I know that. I apologize. It's been difficult to get loan approvals here. As you may know, this bank has been under some financial pressure. But I'm happy to say that an attractive offer has been made for its purchase and all is well. As a result of all of this, I think I can say that you may count on the loan for your firm, Winged Eagles. You mean you're not at all concerned about the cancellation of the government contract? That is a factor, I guess, but... You don't have any idea who's made the offer to purchase Stonehurst Savings, do you? Mr. Armstrong, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, well, 
I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised to find out that your brother has made a substantial offer to buy this bank. And with the bank and the family, I don't think you have anything to worry about as far as your loan is concerned. Yes. Oh, good. Send him in. Aha. Nice to see you. Ready? I hoped you'd still be here. You look well. Hmm? So, from now on, you'll be doing business with me. This firm of yours, Winged Eagles, sounds like it could be you a very... You listen to me, Bruno. You keep your dirty hands off, Winged Eagles. Mrs. Longbridge. Mr. Armstrong, ask him just how he made his fortune and how he ruined his family. Ask him. Just ask him what he did to my sister. I don't do business with Nazi collaborators. I don't do business with the man who raped my sister. Little lady, you remind me of someone I once knew. I'm not a little lady. Oh. Annie, why don't you wait outside and read a book? I'm just beginning to break the ice with Mr. Castelli. Annie? Mom? That's your picture. Who's that man with his arm around you? An old friend. Boy, I remember when we were so busy planning stunts, I used to sleep in this office. One film right after the other. Well, flying pictures are out for the time being. Like jitterbugging. I'm sorry. Ah, Freddie, what a life. Here I am sitting on my duff, nothing to do but look after my investments. Huh? Oh, yeah. Back in the good old days, I bought land restaurants, gas stations, you name it. And it all turned to gold. I am bored. Boy, have I got a job for you. No, no, not in that air cargo outfit of yours. Jock Hampton wasn't the only veteran to have ideas about air cargo. Three or four of them have gone bust this year alone. Swede, it's the future. And Winged Eagles will make it. Oh, what makes you so sure? I want you to run Winged Eagles. Our problem is too much business too fast. Oh, you're going to have more damn fun trying to figure out our mess. And maybe I can straighten out mine. Now, what do we use for money? Well... Oh, mine, I guess, knowing you. Okay, if you insist. Ah, oh, come on, you said you had more than you need. Ah, what the hell? Count me in. Ah, oh, sweet, thank you. <laughs> I love you. like that house? Actually, yes. That is probably the only kind of house that looks absolutely right in California. We need a new house, don't we? Come on, come with me. Come on. I'm assuming you've already bought it. Everything is going terrifically speed when you charge, right? Well, I went out and found this place. It's ship shaped from top to toe, all systems working, checked out, and ready to be lived in. Charming. Really charming. Where's the bar? There's no bar. But I did think of something.
best Sloan style. Cheers. You don't think it's too big, do you, Tony? Because when we have more children and we entertain, it, it won't seem nearly as big. So you have all that already planned, do you? What's wrong with dreaming about the future? I was hoping I could do this drunk. Although Dutch courage never works for me, particularly not for this. You don't like the house? This? This is precisely the sort of thing you do that I cannot endure. Here's your whole cocked up life, Tony. Compliments of Freddy. Your dreams are tomorrow's facts. I'm incidental. I'm your bloody consort. We're wrong together, Freddy. We're dead wrong. You must have had a few since you woke up this morning. If you could hear yourself, you'd be so ashamed. I've been ashamed for years. I'm almost used to it. You take over everything, Freddy, don't you? You took over our lives the minute we moved here six years ago. If it hadn't been for you, we'd have been busting back in England in six months. But you were invincible, unbeatable, as always. You, Jock and Swede, made winged eagles work. I've been excess baggage from the beginning. Tony, stop it. How could you be so horribly unfair? I, I couldn't have made it without you. <laughs> Tony, please tell me what went wrong. We have nothing in common except Annie in the old days. It's not enough. I want a divorce. Come in. Mom, you've got to get dressed. I don't know why I said I'd go, well, Annie. Why don't you call Jock and tell him I'm sick? I will not. You've told me never to lie. Why do you remember that, when I also told you to obey your mother no matter what? Oh, Mom, really? I mean, you've been a hermit ever since Daddy went back to England. I mean, people get divorced. I don't deserve this. You're heartless. No, I'm not. I'm being sensible. Now pull yourself together and get dressed. And if you don't smile, you know how Jock's going to feel. It's not a real date anyway, so just pretend. Looks like it should be part of the red roof. Yeah, it does. Ah, <laughs> it is. Good, good. Okay, let's see. Treetops. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. Wow. Wow is right. You're a dream. Mommy, how old do I have to be before I get to wear a dress like that? Old. Very, very old, Annie. Come on, gorgeous. I'm not your date, Jock. I only agreed to come with you because you said you needed a wingman to protect you. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Awful. Come on, it's just a reunion. Why did I say yes? That music. Shall we? Jock. Jock! Hey! Hey, guys! Hey! Good to see <laughs> you, you again! Hey, I'm glad you could make it. That's good, Freddy. This is my wife, Kathy. Hi, nice to meet you. Freddy, I'm so much action. 43. Stop the music. Drum roll, please. 
Hey guys, can I have your attention? Everybody? You guys remember when we used to fall out of our kites and drop our chutes? We used to drink that uh, warm English beer. And remember how we used to sing until we fell down? So we could get the strength to do it all again the next day? You remember that sometimes there would be a girl there that would sing those great old war songs? First officer de Lancel, come on up here. Come on. Let's save these guys. I knew you'd want to do it for the boys. We've got all the music. I'll bet you have. in there. I didn't think I could ever sing those words again. Let go. There's nothing wrong with being the way you used to be. Let's sit. Come on. Can we just talk? We never just talk, except about business. Just talk? Yeah. Oh, about anything. Uh, the way people might talk when they've known each other for ten years, but don't really know each other at all. Freddie, don't you think I have an existence of my own? Uh, a life of hopes and dreams that doesn't have anything to do with the Longbridge family or winged eagles. Chuck, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know... Wait, just listen to me. Listen to me. I had the bad luck to fall in love once in my life in a church in England. Five seconds before you went and got married. Oh, Freddy. My darling. Darling Freddy. I've always loved you. Please. Let me try to make you love me. I mean, how could any man be fool enough to leave you? I told Tony that he was out of his mind. Every time I saw him with another girl, I warned him that he was nuts. I mean, thank God he didn't listen to me. Oh, my God. Did you just sit around and talk about me? Did he tell you all the, the ugly, sad, private details of what was going on between us? Did you talk about me with his girlfriends? Did you explain how I didn't understand his old buddy? My God! You knew everything all along, and I never dreamed. I never dreamed.
Give me the tower. Who's that? Joe. Yeah, it's Jock. Listen, I've been calling around all night looking for Freddy. You haven't seen her, have you? What? She took off in the Bonanza when? Damn it, she was in no condition to fly. Marcel, I just don't understand this delay with my loan. All vineyard loans have been delayed, Paul. This is most inconvenient. The, the very worst time. We have always backed the great champagne houses. You know that. But your, your business has not been good, Paul. None of the houses is doing well. But some have more capital than Belmont. Banking is a business, too. When the region does poorly, so do we. You're not going to turn me down. You have borrowed on all of your assets. We can only make a small loan on the equipment. I am sorry. Oh, yes, Vicomte. Your father was just here. I made him a loan, as he requested. But he has nothing left to borrow against. Absolutely nothing. Hello. How did it go? Well, I didn't get the amount I asked for. <laughs> but the bank will lend us enough money to get us through the next harvest. 
<laughs> You're a dreadful actor, my darling. Hmm? If it had gone well, you would have called me from town. <laughs> we'll make it. The champagne houses will just have to pool their resources. Of course, it would have been different if he'd had the treasure. I blame myself every day for Bruno. Every day of my life. We've all had to suffer for it. It was hard for me to believe I could hate my own son. Hello, Madame de Lancel. Yes. Yes, I understand. As soon as I've made the necessary arrangements. How's Annie? Is she all right? She's a trooper, just like her mom. Well, thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Freddy. She's had a crash, hasn't she? I must go to her. Mrs. Longbridge. Mrs. Longbridge. Mrs. Longbridge. I'm Dr. Whites, and you're Freddie Longbridge. You know that, don't you? Good girl. Where's Annie? Now, don't waste your strength trying to ask questions. I'll tell you everything you want to know. You are going to be as good as new, I promise. You've been in a coma for 36 hours, but you're doing very well now. And just remember, I'm here for you. Your mother's here. Would you like to see her? All right, but it'll just be for a few minutes. I spoke to your ex-husband a number of times in England, but not as often as I spoke to Mr. Hampton. He's been here since the accident. Would you like to see him? Are you sure? Dr. Davis, telephone, please. Dr. Davis, telephone, please. Dr. Blair, Dr. Blair, Dr. J. Hamilton, Dr. J. Hamilton. Well, we're over the rough part. <laughs> Thank God. Thanks for everything, Doc. Can we see her now? You can see her, Mrs. Delancell, but uh, I'm afraid that she doesn't want to see you, Mr. Hampton. I'm sorry. Well, I just, I, I mean, for I'm five sorry. minutes she at least. I'm sorry, no, can I and just... I can't disturb her about well, it. Doc, be patient. Freddie's all right, and that's what counts. to gain an advantage. How? Oh, that's not important, Mother. Everything is over for me now. Even flying. Nonsense, my darling. You'll fly again, Freddy. In time, you'll forget this bitter memory. When I took off in that plane, I hated every man in my life. I hated Tony for leaving me. Mac for dying. 
and job for being so cruel and dishonest. I'll never be able to forgive him. Love has its risks just like flying. Don't be afraid to love again, Freddy. It's what's missing from your life right now. Mr. Tash, Bruno de Lancel, I want you to buy as much winged eagle stock as possible. Oh, it's taken a nosedive, Mr. de Lancel. One of the principals of the company had a plane crash and may not recover. Mr. Tash, I am fully aware of the situation and my sources indicate that unfortunately she will survive. Just do as I ask. I like a woman who knows how to get the best from a lobster. <laughs> oh, damn it, Eve, I'm going to miss the hell out of you. Oh, those dinners, all those movies. You're a wonderful friend, Jack. Uh, you never let us feel alone for a minute. I don't know what Annie and I would have done without you all this time. Eve, listen. About Freddy. I've how... tried, Jack. I've asked her every week, and it's always the same. I never had a chance with her. Once Freddy's cast you out of her life, there isn't much hope. She doesn't even mention Tony. She's been terribly hurt, Jock. She's different from every other female. She always was. No other girl ever came close. I won't argue that with you. It's Mac. Sweet told me she never got over him. Just what in hell was so special about him? He was the first man in Freddy's life. She gave herself so completely, so blindly, and then he was gone. It was a terrible time. She measured every man by Mac. Not by who he was, but who he had to be. Well, when can I expect them? Hold on. Look, I'll call you right back. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I want out. No strings. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, sweet. What do we need her for anyway? Business is great. All the planes are flying, full loads in both directions, and we're making our stockholders very happy. You buy my stock, or I sell it on the open market. Now, whatever you can do to make this as painless as possible, I'd appreciate it. Painless? Painless for who?
for the flight. Now listen, Freddie. You, uh, you call me if you need anything, anything at all. Your mother's a brave lady. She's been through a war. She's gonna get through this. Don't you worry about that flight. I looked her over. That constellation's a damn nice little airplane. Don't be okay. Bruno coming, Mother? Oh, you wouldn't dare. Bruno would dare anything. Dear Lord, we prepare a place to hold the long cells where there shall be peace always. He will in death, as in life, share in your earth of so many bountiful harvests. And with his salvation will be everlasting love from his memory for his wife Eve. Your father would not have wanted you here. 
I will not allow you to disgrace his memory. Leave at once. Well, I will not let you deprive me of my greatest pleasure. until he's brought to justice. Monsieur Offray, the notaire. I uh, have given him some papers. He has studied them. I'll now distribute a copy to each of you. The laws of the Republic are simple. One third to my father's wife and the remainder divided among his children. But that is unnecessary in our situation. What are you saying? I've waited for this moment. My father married a whore and brought disgrace on our family. How dare you? As you can see from the papers, our father mortgaged all the assets of Chateau Valmont, the house, the fields, the reserve of Champagne, and could not pay. Uh, when he defaulted, I made every single payment with great pleasure. Now, all that goes with the house of Valmont belongs to me. I can't believe this. My attorneys are seeing to it that the final papers arrive promptly. In any event, I shall be in possession of Valmore in about 48 hours. Leave here. Now. I never want to see any of you again.
account paid in full. What do we do now, Captain? We report the hunting accident at headquarters, my boy. The accident, Captain? An accident if ever I saw one. It was neither an accident or a murder. It was an execution. But the war's been over for years. That means nothing. They knew what Bruno was even better than we did. Oh, Mother. I used to think I had the answers to everything. But with Max's death and Tony's leaving me, I wonder what kind of life I have. Flying is a nightmare to me after the crash. Flying, my first love. I can never take a plane up again. I've lost the horizon. Your father said that a harvest like life is always problematical. Spring bounty is no guarantee of autumn fulfillment. Life has no guarantees either. You can either ride your dreams like a thoroughbred or drag behind like a pack mule. I understand your feelings of loss and disappointment. But even a perfect champagne can't last forever. But it does leave a special glow in the back of your throat after you've swallowed it. That glow is called a farewell. Another chance to remember. A reminder that life does go on, no matter how hard it seems sometimes. Don't ever berate yourself for what you've been. It's what you're about to become that's important. I often wondered, was Father bitter about your past? Whether he felt like it had ruined his career? Your father loved me unconditionally. I hope you'll be as lucky as I was. Goodbye, Freddy. Give Annie a big hug for me. almost every afternoon since you've been gone. How could you let him? Are you all right? You did fine. Oh, Mom, I did not. I was all over the place. That's what Jock said anyway. But each time I get a little better. Of course you will. He says I have a lot to learn. I wanted to surprise you because I knew how sad you were about Grandpa. It was all my idea. Jock thinks you're going to get mad because I made him give me lessons. Why don't you go up to the lunch counter and wait with Sweet, okay? All right, Mom. All right, hon.
Get out of there. Why should I? Because I want to tell you what I think of you. That's too tempting to turn down. I was going to tear you apart with my bare hands. Until I saw how happy Annie was. I figure some of the credit goes to you. <laughs> Thanks. She's a natural, Freddy. Just like you. Watching Annie, it, it takes me back so long ago. You were someone who taught me how to fly. Mac. Yeah, your mother told me. Made it very easy for me. <laughs> oh, you make it easy, Freddy, or you make it impossible. It's always full throttle, both ways. Does that bother you? Never has, never will. How many times do I have to tell you I like you just the way you are? Listen, let's take up this little kite, huh? No. Come on, come on. I've always wanted to fly with you, and it's the best time of day to watch the sunset. No. Come on. Damn it, Jack. I've completely lost my nerve since the accident. I can't even get into the plane. I don't know what you want out of life, but you are not allowed to lose your nerve. I mean, damn it all, Freddy. <laughs> you know, something, I had a little dog when I was a kid. I never could figure her out. Just when she's supposed to be inside by the fire, she's outside in the rain. I bet your dog ran away. How'd you know that? I told you once that I fell in love for keeps when I first set my eyes on you. The years between, I've tried to make it disappear. I don't want to be in love with you. You may not want to, but you are. I like single-mindedness in a man. It's a lovable quality. I am never gonna lose you. I'm never gonna let you go. So, lady, we are going flying. Now, come on. You don't want much, do you? I want it all. All. <laughs> My mind's made up. You like that. You just told me so. But I have no choice. No. Not if you love me. No choice. No choice at all. Come on. Once again. 
Again. 